Did you know that if one person had stayed alive for a few more months, modern Germany would have been wiped off the map and the American Revolution may never have happened? And what if I told you the Second Sino-Japanese War was triggered by a man's need to use the bathroom? These things sound insane, but this is what happens if you trace events back to a point of interest. Although super interesting to talk about and give examples, everything that has ever happened and will ever happen is the result of a so-called butterfly effect, so do not take this too seriously. It's a fun and sometimes unnerving thing to trace back an event or action in this way. I'm sure many of you have been in a situation where you thought, if I was here a few minutes before, that could have happened to me. So with that, here are five mind-blowing examples of the butterfly effect that may change the way you view the small things, because they can and often do have a much bigger outcome. Before we get started, we just uploaded the Stanley Kubrick documentary over on Patreon, and we talk about his incredibly controversial life, from the theories that he was involved in the moon landings, to some incredibly dark messages it seems he was putting in his movies to suggest there is a much more sinister side to the film industry than we could ever imagine, and it seems that with the recent allegations going around the last few months, the messages could be coming to light. You can access that documentary and also our murderous minds on Richard Ramirez for just $2 per month. Check out the link in the description or in the comments section below. Now, let's get into this. Sophie Chotek was a cause of World War I. We've all heard the famous World War I butterfly effect that a wrong turn led to the assassination of Franz Ferdinand and thus led the world to war in what would become World War I. But you can dial this down further with endless butterfly effects. This one is a particularly good one. 99% of you would have never heard of Sophie Chotek. She would become the wife of Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria, while she wasn't a royal but was a duchess, the Duchess of Honnenberg. As she was not royalty, despite being his wife, Sophie was unable to accompany Franz during royal ceremonies, which he hated. However, she was able to ride with him in public while he was acting in his military capacity as Inspector General of the Austro-Hungarian Army. For this reason alone, the Archduke decided to inspect the army in Bosnia so that his wife would be able to ride by his side in public. He did so in an open-top car so everyone could see the two of them together. As many of you will know, they then got assassinated by Gavrilo Princip, who ran up to the open-top car and shot both of them at point-blank range killing them instantly. Austria demanded an unconditional apology from Serbia, where Gavrilo was from, and although they didn't condone the assassination, they wouldn't apologize. Austria then declared war on Serbia. Russia, as Serbia's biggest ally, then declared war on Austria. Germany, then as Austria's ally, declared war on Russia. And before we knew it, World War I was started. In conclusion, if Franz Ferdinand had never married Sophie, he never would have visited Bosnia, and would not have been assassinated in that way. If one person had stayed alive for a few more months, modern Germany would have been wiped off the map, and the American Revolution may never have happened. Frederick II, heir to the Hohenzollern throne in the mid-18th century, and commander of Prussia, which at that point had small land and no real influence in the world. This was until Frederick came into play. Frederick was a skilled military man, quickly turning the Prussian army into one of the most formidable forces in Europe, although he made the mistake of starting the Seven Years' War. By 1756, Frederick found himself fighting essentially every European superpower at the same time. Russia, France, Austria and Sweden. Frederick still managed to hold off all of his enemies until the year 1760, when he faced the forces of Elizabeth Petrovna, Empress of the Russian Empire, who had a huge army. Elizabeth was firmly anti-Prussian, and after her allies were turned back by Frederick's tactics, she had her own armies march on Frederick's kingdom. The Russian leadership could not match Frederick's mind, but they had the numbers to dominate his army. After several battles, by 1761, the Russians had occupied Berlin, and Frederick was on his last legs, facing an overwhelming Russian onslaught. Victory was impossible, but then, on January the 5th, 1762, Empress Elizabeth unexpectedly died after a dramatic decline in health, 
and was succeeded by her heir, Peter III. Peter was a fan of Prussia, and to the astonishment of every one of his allies, Peter chose to make peace with Frederick. Peter even granted Frederick fresh Russian troops to use in his vastly depleted army, before withdrawing from the war. With this, Frederick put Prussia on the map. Prussia went on to establish a kingdom ruled by ethnic Germans, which would influence German unification a hundred years later, and Germany today is only what it is because of Prussia. If the Empress had not have died on the eve of the victory, Prussia would have been defeated, and Elizabeth could have done whatever she wanted with it, most likely dividing it amongst her allies, as would be done to Poland just a few years later. If she hadn't have died, there would be no Prussia, and there would be no Germany as we know it today. But how does this tie in with the American Revolutionary War? Well, during the Seven Years' War, Frederick had an ally in Great Britain. Britain was forced to provide support, primarily through naval actions against its maritime rivals like France, and the spillover of this conflict merged into the Thirteen Colonies. So Britain and France were fighting all over the world, including in America, which led to British victory for dominance in North America. The victory came at a huge financial cost, and to pay off the debt incurred from partnering with Frederick against France, Britain decided to tax the Thirteen Colonies. The Thirteen Colonies protest in anger and rebelled against the rule of Great Britain, which manifested into the American Revolution. In conclusion, if Frederick the Great hadn't been born, he wouldn't have laid the foundations for Germany, and also wouldn't have accidentally crafted the circumstances that led to the American Revolution. In rural Russia, in the late 18th century, a slave was freed. As a result, man walks on the moon. In 1765, Nikola Ulyanov was born a slave at a Russian farm. At some point in the late 1700s, he was granted his freedom by the owner of the land. With his freedom, Nikolai was able to train as a tailor, with which he used to become successful, later catching the attention of the daughter of a wealthy merchant named Anna. In 1823, the pair married and went on to have four children, one of which himself had a son in 1870 called Vladimir Ulyanov, but Vladimir would become known by his alias, Lenin. Lenin spent his whole life as a political revolutionary, and was a major figure in the Russian Revolution of 1917, founding the Bolshevik Party. Following the revolution, Lenin and his Marxist Bolsheviks seized power, which ensured that the form of government with which the new Russians took would be communist. Had any of the other parties rose to power, it's likely that Russia would have developed into a democracy instead. Of course, we cannot guarantee this, but with the Marxists in power, the Soviet Union was formed. After Lenin's death, Joseph Stalin rose to power. After World War II, the Cold War begins as a result of the conflict between democratic and communist ideologies. For 30 years, the two major superpowers face off military in the world of sports and science. This resulted in the space race between Russia and the US. In 1961, Russia puts first man in space, and by 1969, the US put man on the moon. Although it's very likely that the Russian Revolution would have happened without Lenin, it's likely that Russia would have had a different political party, and as a result, Russia and the US most likely wouldn't have began the Cold War, and the incentive for the space race wouldn't have been there. In conclusion, if a slave had not been saved back in the 18th century, the Soviet Union wouldn't have been formed the way it was, as Lenin would not have been born. The Cold War most likely wouldn't have happened in the timeline it had, and man may not have walked on the moon the way they did. The very start of World War II was started because someone had a full bladder. Following on from the World War I butterfly effect we mentioned at the beginning of this video, we all know that without World War I, there would have been no World War II. So in that sense, World War I is a butterfly effect of World War II. But this butterfly effect is a fun one. That if not for someone looking for a place to go for the toilet, World War II wouldn't have started. It sounds insane, but listen. In 1937, no one would have suspected that in just two years, the whole world would be at war. Japan especially. While in China, specifically the city known as the European world as Peking, now Beijing. During 1937, it was still under control of the Republic of China. 
However, the Imperial Japanese Army regularly intimidated China by flying planes over and marching troops in. Since Japan had plans to invade China, they were scaring the population from resisting when the time came for a full-blown invasion. At this point in time, the southwest of China was not under control of the Japanese, while in southwest China there was a rail line running to Beijing that was heavily guarded by China, with Japanese troops very close by keeping an eye on the Chinese. This was a hotspot for rivalry, and gunfire would often take place there. On July the 7th, 1937, the Japanese army conducted military exercises near Beijing, just south of Marco Polo Bridge, a choke point held strongly by the Chinese army. Sometime around 10 p.m., Private Kikijiro went to use the bathroom, but once he tried to rejoin his unit, they had moved on without him. By 11 p.m., he had still not arrived, and his unit suspected that he had been abducted by the Chinese. The Japanese asked the Chinese commanders for permission to search their base to look for him. They refused, as they had locked the gates, but said they would conduct their own search. But the Japanese were insistent, and with the Chinese not letting them in, they prepared for attack. Sometime during their preparation, the private returned and told his commanders that he had gotten lost after needing the toilet. However, shots were still fired. The Japanese had the excuse they had been looking for. Just after 12 o'clock, a Japanese infantry unit tried to breach the city's walls, but were pushed back. They then issued an ultimatum, promising a bigger attack unless the gates be open. Fast forward a few hours, and by 4.50 a.m., the Second Sino-Japanese War had begun. There is no denying, if the private hadn't have gone to the bathroom or taken so long, there wouldn't have been an excuse for the Japanese to attack that night. An attack was inevitable, but it almost certainly wouldn't have happened that night. This would have pushed back any number of events, and the timeline would have changed. The Second Sino-Japanese War has long been considered an alternative date to the start of World War II, as this war merged with the official World War II start date, although this has divided opinions. The Germans lost D-Day because of a birthday party. Now we want to say this off the bat, if Rommel had been present during D-Day, there is no doubt Germany would have still been defeated as their troops were already set up per his instructions, and there would have been little he could have done. However, it may have played out a little differently if he was there, and the circumstances for which he wasn't are interesting. The Normandy invasion is probably the single most important moment in World War II, and it could have played out differently if not for a birthday party. Erwin Rommel was a significantly important general for the German army during World War II, and after being away from his wife for years, he decided on her 50th birthday that this would be a good time to return home. After purchasing a pair of shoes for her in Paris, Rommel tried everything in an attempt to return home to her, even contemplating self-injury to get out of combat. But it would be the atrocious weather that led the Germans to believe an incoming beach attack would be called off. So Rommel took the opportunity to leave his post and surprise his wife for her birthday, certain that an attack was not going to happen. But the weather drastically changed, and whilst away, the invasion of Normandy began. Rommel was informed at his home early on June the 6th to inform him of the Allies' landing on his unorganised beach. Since Hitler had limited Rommel and all other German commanders' ability to respond to an invasion by keeping the authority to commit the German armoured reserve to himself, when Rommel returned back to the battlefield, there were not nearly enough troops to reinforce the beach effectively and he knew it was lost. The Germans' loss of Normandy Beach was a significant blow to the campaign, and if it hadn't been for Rommel, what people call the most skilled German military tactician's absence, things could have turned out a little differently. Again, there is no way Germany would have held the beaches, but it could have resulted in more casualties on the Allies' side if he had been present, and was able to change tactics. So that's five examples of the butterfly effect, Again, you can get so caught up on these, because everything leads to a change in circumstances in the future. So just take these as a fun way of looking at how events lead up to one another. We wanted to share another perspective on the so-called butterfly effect, and how it can be used for good. Think about the times when you feel happy, and how your mood reflects onto everyone around you. Those people's mood then reflects onto everyone they meet, and so on. The same is true if you're rude to people, you can ruin someone's mood, 
they then get into an argument with someone else and put them in a bad mood, and so on. It's the ripple effect, and it's fun to try out with all areas of your life. Conclusion, don't be a horrible person because you have no idea how that ripple can change the course of you and everyone else's life around you. We love these, and if you want to see more, then let us know. Thanks for watching, and as always, we'll see you in the next video.